Well, it is September. The hill climb season is on just about. Quite a few cancellations. Um, I'm only taking part in a couple of um, official events. Um, so I figured I'd have a little informal hill climb first thing this morning here on Swains. The plan is spin to win for the first two thirds and then mash for cash. Looking to be two minutes 45, that's my PB. I'm hoping to achieve that. Power's been good, certainly it was um, on Wednesday. Well, even though I run the Continental 5000 tubeless tyres, normally I would carry a saddlebag with a spare inner tube and gas canister, but today I wanted to save a few grams, so fingers crossed I won't need um, that saddlebag. Anyway, I digress. Fairly happy with that climb, especially um, really pushing through some quite intense lactic acid there, so you know that's a definite learning point that there's a bit more I can do in terms of, I guess, um, pushing through the pain threshold a little bit. Overall quite happy I guess with the pedalling technique and the power throughout the climb. Still a bit to do to improve in terms of the switch between the big ring and the little ring. It was a bit clunky, a little bit agricultural to say the least. Um, and I certainly lost a few watts um, as we hit the really steep part of the climb in the final third. Anyway, I'm going to try and have a go at Highgate Hill West, see what my max effort is there today. Um, and then crack on home and get on with work. Very busy at the moment out on the road, skills are back, everyone's getting back to work. Um, but that Highgate Hill West climb wasn't quite as good. Um, I think I overcooked it in the first third. Um, the power was starting to wane a little bit as I hit the steeper kind of final third again. Um, but got back out of the saddle and started to mash and I think rescued, rescued the climb. So it may still be just about a PV for that one. Anyway. Today it's Jane's birthday and my daughter's birthday, double bubble. So heading back, gonna hit the work and um, celebrate. It's a weekend of celebration. And what a beautiful, beautiful weekend it's gonna be. Look at this. Nice, crisp, but sunny, early autumn day. Perfection. Well, I think it'd be remiss of me not to come home with something special for Jane today. Happy birthday. This is take two. So we're, just having, we're just having some, right, it's take three. We're just having some post-work sushi, starting on the veggies, ahead of the main celebration tomorrow. And now for the quality carbs and lean protein, and Jane's tiger roll, which is a little bit naughtier. Wasn't happy with my Swain's Lane attempt yesterday. Back on route there. Now, I do consider myself a bit of a space cadet, um, but I had thought that the segment for Swain's Lane was all of Swain's Lane, starting back there at a roundabout. Turns out it isn't. I've been wondering why my efforts are basically three minutes, 15, that kind of length, and yet my best ever time is 2.45. But well, it turns out the segment actually starts much further down the lane. Just coming towards it about now. I reckon it starts about here, just allowing for a little margin of error. And that's about 15 seconds at full pelt that I'm saving in terms of energy by starting at the correct place. The other thing I reckon is that it's a big gear climb. It's short and brutal. And my best ever time, 2.45, I was in the big gear and I just mashed it. So that's the intent of day, monster it.
Well, the level of excitement was so high that unusually for me, I decided to stop um, the data mid-ride and uh, transfer uh, from the Bolt into Strava. And the Wahoo Bolt data is actually pretty promising. Um, we started the lap, uh, lap two, um, obviously before the segment started. Two minutes 56 for the lap, average speed 23.4 kilometers an hour, covering 1.15 kilometers, and that compares to 0.9 kilometers uh, for the segment itself. Um, average power there, 385 watts for the two minutes 56. Again, very promising in a peak of 512. So let's go um, to the segment itself. Oh, there's a little medal there. Um, hopefully a PB. Um, so drilling in. Where are we? Uh, there, there we go. Yes, there we go. Official 100 climbs, number 27, Swain's Lane. Two minutes 35 over 0.92 kilometers. Um, Strava saying 394 watts, the bolt is normally more accurate, but let's see where that puts me on the leaderboard. Um, 362nd on the leaderboard out of, uh, yeah, 18,568 in total, so super happy with that. At the top of the leaderboard, you got Sammy B, and he was recently joint KOM holder with Thomas Arkell, but took sole ownership of the crown with a time of 148 and literal monster power. But I also like to see where I am in terms of my own age group, I 45 to 54, and I'm 19th there. Um, so again, very happy with that out of the 2,419 who've undertaken a segment. But yeah, quite a lot of work to do to get to the top of my age group leaderboard with a time of 2.10 uh, for John Donison. Um, so plenty of work to do. Next on the agenda, we'll be going back to Highgate Hill West to try monstering it there rather than just spinning to win. Um, but right now on the agenda is get back home, spin out the legs with a bit of really high cadence um, zone 2 Victor Campanart style, and then Jane and I are off out to celebrate her birthday. Welcome to the interview panel. The world's yellowest butter. The interview panel presents spiky posh chicken salad and spiky posh salmon salad. Key more comments about portion size, I present the mains. Cauliflower. Pasta. The world's most expensive cauliflower. And some pasta. Cod and potatoes. I know what people are gonna say. Now I have to try a 40 pound piece of cauliflower, here we go. I mean, that, that is incredible, but you can do that with a cauliflower, amazing. But, it's her birthday. So we've had the starters and the mains. Complaints on portion size in the comments below, please. But this means that at long last, the main event can now start. I course mean dessert. This is a tipsy turvy cake. It's got some pineapple, and a lovely pineapple syrup in the bottom, but look at this. Blackberry tart, and under here, ooh. Now tell me, those carbs don't look good. Coach Laverick, the clotted cream has been left on the side. I'm not a clotted cream fan either. Make the <laughs> London gelato. <laughs> So who are your toppings today? We do have apple and popping candy, the colorful one in the center, raspberries and meringue, and white chocolate and coconut will be the last. Apple and popping candy, raspberries and white chocolate, and caramel. <laughs> similar, similar. So look, look, here we go. Gas and ingredients. So, <laughs> bit, London ice cream. There we go. What toppings are you having, Jane? I'm going to have the coconut one. Coconut topping. <laughs> White chocolate and coconut. Very good. I won't be getting a coconut. Thank you very much. Here we go. <laughs> Birthday gelato. Very elegant. Uh, popping candy for me. Definitely. There we go. So. Thank you. 
Thank you ever so much. You're welcome. Thank you. There you go. Mm. That's literally why I love this restaurant. Not that we come very often, in fact, we come very, very, very occasionally, but. Mm. Popping candy. Time for the pre race weigh in. Bunch of Heston Blumenthal, clearly didn't make any impact on the scales. And now in search of the fast digesting carbs, it would actually be a lovely day for a ride outside. But I do like a race, and this is the only place I'm going to get a race indoors, courtesy of Zwift. But look at that glorious early September morning. Time for the fast digesting carbs. There they go. Mino work capacity. Cold coffee. Well, let there be no doubt, I think that was the hardest Zwift course that I've ever tried. Um, one kilogram of body weight lost during the event. And basically it was a Titans Grove leading to the Epic KOM. And I was full gas, max effort, trying to stay in the lead group up the Epic KOM, which I just about did um, until that final kind of bend around um, to the KOM itself. Um, really happy with that, joint PB time there. Then um, a nice little recovery on the descent into the jungle, which is in its own right quite difficult. Um, and then we had to negotiate out the Zwift. And I was really, really um, feeling like I was in a lot of trouble on out the Zwift, but with a live stream, everybody's help, really appreciate the encouragement, kind of kept a nice high cadence and an infernal pace and, um, you know, got the job done. 266 watts average up um, out the Zwift, 46 minutes. That's a pretty decent time on the rest of all of that intensity. And overall, one hour, 40 minute race, uh, P7, uh, 260 watts average, 4.2 watts a kilogram. But the nice thing is that really, what I really want to do is have a very good climb up the Epic. Um, because on this Thursday and Friday, I did um, Highgate Hill West and Swains Lane on the Thursday, practicing really short, punchy climb. Went back and hit Swains Lane yesterday to get my PB. Um, because what I'm looking to do is kind of replicate what's to come this coming Saturday where I'm hitting um, the, the official hill climb of Leith Hill, um, which is 1.4 kilometers, average gradient 8%. So it's gonna be like a four and a half to five minute climb, max effort. And then on the Sunday, we've got the Porlock Toll Road. And the last time I did that, it was about um, 1858. I think it's about six and a half kilometers, average gradient five or six percent. So um, today was to try and replicate with a little bit more actually the training stress that I'm going to face next weekend. So fingers crossed, all bodes well. Um, now it's time to um, get changed, have a little bit of post ride nutrition, and off out to celebrate my daughter's 18th birthday. So super excited about that. <laughs>